Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in on our online service. Uh, we have two more weeks, and then we're coming back in the sanctuary. We'll still be online, but we'll also be back together again here in the sanctuary. And uh, if you'd like to come, please make a reservation. Call Mary on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday from 10 until 2, and uh, we'll be glad to, to have you come. We're social distance. We take temperatures as you come in. The facility is sterilized uh, at the end of the week prior to our service, and um, there's no offering being taken. That ought to be a real plus right there. <laughs> there's no offering being taken. It's actually taken at the door. So we're not passing plates. We're not using hymnals, and uh, we make you as safe as we possibly can. So please come out and worship and, and be with us. A couple of quick announcements as we get started this morning. Uh, during the month of September, we are supporting two local food pantries with our mission offerings. Uh, each one will get about $500 from uh, our church uh, for feeding the needy and the hungry in our area. Uh, they are the Wildwood Soup Kitchen and also the Christian Food Pantry in Lady Lake. We want you to uh, be aware that our organ fund is almost that close we're almost to our goal. Uh, I think we need about $400 yet, and we've raised the $10,000 in six weeks to pay for it, which is a great thing. Um, the latest thing we're doing is we are uh, we, we, we ran through the gamut of people buying a brick for the whole Walk of Faith uh, to pay for the, the organ. Now what we're doing is we're asking you to donate $10 for a key because we needed about $1,200 yet. So we figured out there are... Uh, uh, 122 black and white keys on the organ, and if we can get $10 donation to sponsor each key, uh, we will get exactly what we needed. So uh, if you haven't already done so, just stick a $10 bill in an envelope and send it into the office uh, or write a check, and uh, we'll, we'll get this all taken care of. My, my goal is to finish this off by the end of the month, so we're, we're done with the, uh, with the fundraising project for the organ. And what we've done to make this a little more interesting is we've told Kevin that he can only use the keys that are paid for to play. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. Okay. So uh, please, please. Write the names on the keys. We're not. No. No, that would interfere with your, your color chart that you have on the keys to play. No, we, can't, we can't do that. No. So... Um, also coming up in November, we want you to mark your calendar. This is a ways away, but uh, on November the 15th, we're going to be celebrating the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the pilgrims uh, in this country or this continent. And so uh, uh, the, we'll have tables set up in the sanctuary and we'll have two services, one at 10 and one at noon. Uh, the morning or the early service will be uh, sweet rolls and fruit and coffee and juice, and the uh, second service at noon will be a little sandwiches and so forth. And um, we have the Lytles coming from Sanford, uh, Kirk and Patty Lytle, and they'll be um, putting on a program about the pilgrims and about the landing. Uh, this is important to us because the Congregational Church has its roots and its beginnings in the pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So uh, we hope that you'll sign up and make a reservation and come out and join us at one of, those, uh, one of those services. The altar flowers this morning on the altar are uh, given by Dan and Pam Sabo, and they are given in honor of uh, Danny's birthday. So happy birthday, Danny. Uh, we hope you have a great, great day. Also on the altar this morning, there's a special candle burning uh, that candle is there in uh, honor and in memory of Evelyn Billing. Uh, Evelyn was the mother of Cindy uh, and uh, the mother-in-law of Terry Robinson, and they're up in Ohio right now. Uh, they were with her when she passed, and we wanted to remember her this morning. So if you would, uh, please observe a moment of silence with me in memory of Evelyn Billing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a life well lived. We thank you for Evelyn's contribution to her family and to her community, for the longevity that you gave her living into well into her 90s. What a blessing. And we know that her family needs your comfort, needs your support. 
So be with them, Father. Be a comfort, be a blanket of love over them. For we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Kevin O'Connell. those who came before the dream of a nation where freedom would endure the work and prayers of centuries have brought us to this day what should be our legacy what will our children say let them say of me I was one who believed 
In sharing the blessing I received Let me know in my heart When my days are through America, America I gave my best to you Each generation From the plains to distant shores With a gift that they were given Were determined to live more Valiant battles fought together Acts of conscience fought alone These are the seeds From which America has grown Let them say of me I was one who believed In sharing the blessing I received Let me know in my heart When my days are through America, America I gave my best to you For those who think They have nothing to share Oh, fear in their hearts There is no hero there No, the quiet acts of dignity Are that which fortifies The soul of a nation That never dies Let them say of me I was one who In sharing the blessings I receive Let me know in my heart When my days are through America, America America, America America, America I gave my best to you. Thank you, John. John Rogerson. Ever living God. We remember those whom have gathered from the storm of life into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish the harmony for which so many gave their lives on September the 11th, 2001. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. To those who gave their lives that day, mothers, fathers, husbands and wives, police officers, firefighters, medical personnel, passers-by, to all whose earthly lives ended on 9-11, we pray your souls found instant peace. We will honor you and remember the life you gave as a patriot of the land of the free and the home of the brave. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. During this past week, I watched on the National Geographic Network as they replayed all of the video and all of the information regarding the 9-11 incident. It never ceases to break your heart 
It never ceases to make a twinge of anger inside of you. But there is also an overriding pride that covers all of that. A pride in this amazing nation of ours. A pride in the wonderful people who populate this place. Whose will cannot be broken. Whose freedom cannot be stolen. Who will go on in spite of it all. So in this service this morning, in some small way, we honor and we remember the people who died in the towers and on the ground surrounding them at the Pentagon and Virginia and also in the fields at Pennsylvania. A day of remembrance, a day that those who lost their lives and for all those who gave their lives should know that we we remember. We will remember every rescuer who died in honor. We will remember every family that lives in grief. We will remember, as our president said at the time. Senator John Kerry said, it was the worst day we have ever seen, but it brought out the best in all of us. It's also a memory of bravery and self-sacrifice and the love that lays down its life for a friend, even a friend whose name it never knew, President Bush. It reminds us that we have gone through these things before. We went through it way back in the days of Pearl Harbor when all of a sudden, just as instantly and just as painfully as on 9-11, the Japanese forces attacked those who had no idea what was coming and the loss of life nearly the same. Truman said America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and on an unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. The will was of this nation was not broken after Pearl Harbor, and the will of this nation was not broken after 9-11. We will never, never forget. A time to remember those who died, those who served, and those who will carry on. us peace today and strengthen all who lack the faith to call on thee each day heal our land and keep us safe and free watch over all who understand the need for liberty Heal our land, heal our land, and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in thee. If we would be free Heal our land Please help us find our way For in thy word we find our strength 
If we look up each day, heal our land and fill us with thy love, keep us upon the path of truth that comes from heaven above. Heal our land, heal our land, and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in thee if we would be free. Protect us by the power of thy rod and keep us as one nation under God. Heal our land, heal our land and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in Thee. If we would be Thank you, John. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Creator God, we confess that we have a hard time living as people who are prepared to die. We live and act as if we will be able to live forever. We fail to admit that the only guarantee we all have in life is that we will one day die. As we remember today the people who we have loved who are no longer with us, we pray that you would help a portion of each one of them to continue to live in our hearts. More than this, we pray that you would show us how to more faithfully live so that living or dying our lives may be with you. We want to be forgiving and redeemed and to offer that same forgiveness to others so that we might always enjoy a sweet communion with you. Whenever we are in crisis, the Holy Spirit comes among us, nurturing within every possible way of life. God yearns for the best outcome to be made visible within us. God has not left us alone. God is offering us new life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning, everyone. Well, as most of you know, Kevin and I do a concert in my driveway every Monday evening. In the very first week, we thought the concert was over. And my across-the-street neighbor said, Oh, no, Billy, you have to sing one more song. And this was the song that Jackie suggested. And we've closed every concert with it ever since. And hopefully we'll continue to do so until this pandemic is over. It was written by Lee Greenwood, Lee Greenwood and has become an anthem unto its own. So please join me as we sing this most wonderful song. If tomorrow all the things were gone I've worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children as his wife I'd thank my lucky stars To be living here today For that flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away 
and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. Love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea. From Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A. Well, there's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say hey, that I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt i love this land god bless the usa and i'm proud to be an american where at least i know i'm free and i won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me and i gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt i love this land god bless the u.s We have a prayer shawl to dedicate today to Helen Thompson. Helen is having open heart surgery. She's a friend of the Starkweathers, and uh, we'd like to send this out to Helen. Heavenly Father, you are always beside us, always within us. You never leave us or forsake us. And so for Helen, we dedicate this prayer shawl, and we ask that as it goes to her, that she would receive not only the prayer shawl itself, but the love and the prayers and the hope and the thoughts that come with it. Be with her, guide surgeon's hands and guide the healing process. Uh, give her strength, give her courage and patience. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this great nation that you've given to us. Lord, help our people and all those in authority to become better spiritually, mentally, and physically so that they may serve the nation effectively. Lord, bless the work of our hands and show us how to live in a way that aligns with your word. Touch our hearts that we may represent godliness and justice. Our right to pray this prayer has been purchased by the blood of heroes and martyrs from many generations. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we can't even begin to imagine the, the terror and the horror of those people in the planes on 9-11, knowing that there was nothing within their control that they could do, knowing that something awful was about to happen. And then those on the ground in New York who watched the planes burst through into those buildings and the horror of all of that. 
and those in the Pentagon doing their jobs and faithfully serving in Washington, D.C., and those in the, on the plane in Pennsylvania, and all of those families, moms and dads, grandmoms and grandpops, children. It never ceases to be a heartbreak, Father. And yet at the same time, we know that those feelings have been there for over 200 years. Mothers and fathers and grandparents and children have lost loved ones in wars, soldiers battling for freedom, sailors losing their lives on the sea, airmen airmen whose planes burst into flames. It's been a heavy toll to keep our land and our people free to allow us to have the privilege of worshiping you. Time has told us that there are many places and many nations on this earth where people are not free to worship you, where people are punished and even martyred because they believe or the way they worship. This day, Heavenly Father, we celebrate the lives of those who died on 9-11 And at the same time, we thank you for the lives of all those who have gone before us, who have paid the price so that we could talk to you today, so that we could be in this place, this church, to worship. We pray, Heavenly Father, that somehow you might awaken within our nation and among our people an appreciation for the gift that has been given to us that we might not just cherish it, but that we might be willing to defend it as they did, that we might understand anew what it means to be able to speak freely, to be able to gather and worship freely, to feel free, to see with pride the stars and the stripes, to look upon this amazing land that you've given to us, And to understand that with all of our faults, we are the most amazing place on earth. We are truly, truly blessed. And I believe, Heavenly Father, that we are blessed because we have not forsaken you. We have believed in you with simple faith. Not always in the right way, not always in a good way, but always in a true way. And so, Heavenly Father, this day as we pray, we we pray for our country. We pray for families who have experienced loss. And we pray for rededication and repurpose to things that really matter. Give us leadership that cares about the future of our country and the welfare of our people. Give us an understanding that we must come together for the betterment of everyone, not for party or political or secular reasons. We need you, Heavenly Father. We need you to give us that same sense of urgency that we all felt the day after 9-11, the Sunday after 9-11, when all of a sudden there was a, a burst of spiritual energy and faith and a deep desire to climb closer to you. We need to do that again and again and again. It needs to be an everyday occurrence. For we are in the same jeopardy, we are in the same danger that we were on September the 10th, 2001. We know that we have been blessed, but we know how fragile that blessing can be. So reach out, Heavenly Father. Touch lives, touch the nation, touch our leaders. Give us a sense of urgency to put our country and our future in your hands. Today, Father, we pray for those that are in our hearts who are going through tough times. We pray for Cindy and Terry Robinson at the loss of Cindy's mother, Evelyn. We pray for Nancy Doggett as she faces her cancer surgery. We pray for all those who are going through treatments and infusions and medications and all of the things that Life seems to throw at us as we get a little older. You are able, Father. You have kept us to this time, and you have given us the sweetness of life, and we are grateful. 
And we ask for each day to be blessed, each day to be strength, stronger and better, and each day to be yours and live for you. We thank you, Father, for all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our friend, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hear people saying that we don't need this war. I say there's some things worth fighting for. What about our freedom and, and this piece of ground? We didn't get to keep them by backing down. They say we don't notice this mess we're getting in. But before you start your preaching, let me ask you this, my friend Have you forgotten How it felt that day To see your homeland under fire And her people blown away Have you forgotten When those towers fell We had neighbors still inside Going through a living hell and you say we shouldn't worry about Bin Laden Have you forgotten? They took all the footage off my TV They said it's too disturbing for you and me It'll just breed anger, that's what those experts say If it was up to me, I'd show them every day Some say this country's just out looking for a fight After 9-11, man, I'd have to say that's right Have you forgotten how it felt that day? To see your homeland under fire And its people blown away Have you forgotten When those towers fell We had neighbors still inside Going through a living hell And you say we shouldn't worry about Bin Laden Have you forgotten Well, I've been through the soldiers who've gone away to war And you can bet that they remember what they're fighting for Have you forgotten all those people killed? Some went down like heroes in that Pennsylvania field Have you forgotten about our Pentagon? All the loved ones that we lost And those left to carry on And you tell me not to worry about Bin Laden Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Our scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, 
verses 1 through 14. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. America, spread your golden wings, sail on freedom's wind, cross the sky. Great bird, with your golden dreams, flying high, flying high. Restless one, in a world of change, keeping dreams aloft in the rain. Spirit free, soaring through the clouds of time, of time. America, are you still dreaming now? Dreaming the promise vows. Of your pioneers, America, keep on flying on, keep your spirits free, facing new frontier. America, are you still dreaming now? Dreaming the promise vows of your pioneers. America, keep on flying now, keep your spirit free, facing new frontiers. America, spread your golden wings, sail on freedom's wind, cross the sky. Great bird, with your golden dreams. Flying high, flying high, flying high, America.
almost thought I was at Epcot that for a minute there. Good job. Thank you very much. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Almost sounds like today's news. We've got fires in California and Oregon. People are dying. Hundreds, maybe thousands of homes and buildings have been destroyed. Whole towns have been burned. We are still going through this pandemic Uh, Yesterday, a little over 3,000 new cases in the state of Florida. Nearly 100 people died. We're going through the same turmoil in our cities, the riots in the streets, the unrest, the feeling of frustration, the crying out for racial justice, for police reform. A lot of turmoil a lot of difficulty, and it creates a lot of fear. We begin to wonder what's wrong with us, what's wrong with our communities, what's wrong with the nation and the foundations on which it was built that we're going through such a time. It seems like we become a little over-possessed by the moment. Not that the things that we are going through are not terrible, not that the the pain and the suffering is not real, but we've forgotten the history. There are those who want to destroy the history and rip down the statues, but uh, that just furthers the pain of the present moment when you can't put it all into perspective. We've been through all of this before, again and again. Somebody said, well, it's never been this bad before. Yes, it has. It's even been worse. We talk about the pandemic that we're going through and about 180,000 people have died. We've talked before about the fact that in the 1918 flu epidemic, over 600,000 people died in the United States and nearly 30 million people died worldwide. We've been through tough times before. When we put into perspective the fact that 180,000 people have died from this current pandemic and we don't belittle that number at all or each individual loss is, is painful. But last year, over 600,000 people died of cancer and another 600,000 plus died of heart disease. You see, we've, we've been through it before. These are not just new things that are happening. These are the the birth pangs. These are the things that ought to be waking us up, and, and yet it seems they don't. After 9 11, I remember pastoring our church in Clarkston, Michigan, just outside of Pontiac, and we had to go into the fellowship hall and wheel the office chairs out of the offices. And people were still standing in the back of the church. We had so many people in church on the Sunday after 9-11 that we did not know where to put them. After all of that horror that we watched on television coming alive in front of our very eyes in living color, people were scared and people wanted God. But kind of like a, a teenager that you scold and correct and you put them in time out or you take away their car keys or you punish them for the moment and they are repentant and they promise never to do it again. But a couple of weeks later or a month or two, they're right back at the same bad behavior. So the American people got over that burst of spirituality really, really quickly. We forgot about the pain of the moment and started to think about the pleasure of the moment. We forgot about the things that that allowed us to be weak and unready. And we went back to our old ways again. Somehow or another, I think that we have become a nation of people who, who don't really believe 
that there can be an end. I mean, we do it with ourselves, with our person. You know, we, we make ourselves up and we go to gyms by the hour and we work out and we, we uh, spend multiplied billions of trillions of dollars a year on, on medicines to keep ourselves going and to give ourselves longevity. We have life in quantity, but not necessarily quality. We try to avoid the reality of the fact that it is appointed unto every man once to die, as the Bible says. The same is true of nations. What we should have realized was the sparks of, of 9-11 should have reminded us that, that greater conflagrations can come from those sparks. Pearl Harbor was not an isolated incident. It was the beginning of a, a horrendous worldwide conflict. And we were very fortunate in many ways that, that 9-11 did not spark an even greater war or turmoil. Empires, nations, governments, big and small, throughout history have all come to a place where they fell. Ancient Egypt, those amazing pyramids, and the great opulence of the pharaohs fell. Assyria and Babylon and the mighty Rome, all of them fell. The great empire of Great Britain, which reached around the world with its colonies from India to Australia to the United States, America, basically fell to become just a little island nation. The breakdown that takes place within those nations is so similar. The pattern that they, they follow is, is almost textbook. There's a, a loss and a breakdown of law and order. There's a breakdown of respect for governmental authority. There's a, a turning away from the religion not necessarily Christian religion, but whatever the religion of that empire or civilization is, it breaks down. Faith breaks down. People become self-centered. People become entitled. If you read the stories and you read the history, you'll find out that the path that each of these great civilizations, nations, or, or countries took is pretty similar. And after you've read it and you've studied it, you'll find that we're on a path that parallels many of them. It's a, a scary concept. We watch as the family unit breaks down. We watch as, as education is not what it used to be. You know, I mentioned earlier in the announcements that we'll celebrate the 400th anniversary of the coming of the pilgrims and one of the things that our pilgrim forefathers did was establish universities. Harvard University for instance was established as a, a ministerial training school first and at one time you were required to go to chapel at Harvard. Now God has been shown the gate. Things have have changed. Education has changed. Our appreciation for education and what its job is has changed. Religion has changed. Even within the church, we have, we have seen a, a falling away from, from belief, a falling away from standards, a, a falling away from tradition to what's acceptable to what brings in the numbers. It is no longer that a church is good because of its missions or because of, of its outreach or because of its uh, affinity for sticking to the word and the scriptures and tradition and history. No, it's how many people do we have and how big can our building become and, and what are the numbers? I hear it at ministers' meetings. I, I read it in periodicals and journals. Somehow bigness is better. 
And that's not true. The truth is that we need to return to those things which have been our source and our strength throughout our history that have kept us on track. And they have kept us on track in the midst of some really miserable times, some bad times. You know, we hear this political back and forth going on because it's an election year and some people say, I can't even listen to it. I have to turn the TV off. It's just too upsetting. I don't know why we have to be like this. We, we've always been like this. Go back and read from colonial times the letters between the, the newspaper articles between uh, John Adams and, and Thomas Jefferson. Read what went on in, in political wrangling go, that went back and forth where, where they would not only call each other names but each other's wives' names. It was absolutely appalling. And some of the underhanded chicanery that went, or, went along with the deal making and so on, it's always been like this. But that doesn't mean it has to be like this. And what it means is that some of the problems that we've had in the past have led to greater problems, have led to a falling away from patriotism, from faith, from honesty and justice and righteousness, and the very things that this country is crying out for today have been sacrificed on the altar of bigness and betterness and utility. The Bible says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. Deuteronomy chapter 20. A return to listening to the voice of God, a return to doing what is right rather than what is expedient, a return to working together and listening to one another to solve the problems of racial injustice and policing and all of these issues that are, are ripping us asunder and making things right and better by sitting down together and peaceably changing things that need to be changed and upholding things that need to be upheld. You do not achieve a thing by ripping down a statue that represents history, even if the event that it represents is bad. Because we need to remember those bad times and those mistakes so that we don't make them again. If you obliterate the statue and you obliterate the memory and the history, the next generation and the generation after that will not remember that it was a mistake and they will make that mistake again. Those who do not learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them, the historian said. We need to pull ourselves up into a place of concern and patriotism and recommitment and rededication. I was talking to someone the other day who's relative uh, came from Nigeria and just became a citizen of the United States. They went through the classes, they studied the Constitution, they knew the history. And I thought to myself when I heard uh, again, was reminded of what a, a new citizen from another country has to do and what they have to learn and what they have to know to, to proudly stand and, and raise their hand and become a United States citizen. And I thought to myself, most of the people who live in this country don't know that. And that is the problem. We don't understand how blessed we are. We don't understand the rights that we have been given. There are those who think that somehow or another, if we can uh, tear apart this country and we can take all the money from the wealthy and give it to the poor that somehow everything will be all right <laughs> that's not going to happen that has never happened the bible says the poor you will always have with you 
They believed that in Cuba, and they relieved it in, in the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, now the Russian Republic. And you know what? There's still rich people, and there's still poor people. The poor are the same. They just changed around who got the money. There are still people driving around Moscow in Mercedes limousines. There are still in, Peking, in Beijing uh, Chinese uh, autocrats driving around and party members driving around and living in penthouse apartments. And there are still people working out in the fields for barely enough to feed their families. It's the same. It hasn't changed So socialism doesn't change it. A new form of government doesn't change it. What changes it is the hearts of the people caring for one another, willing to sacrifice for one another and working to make this a better place for the children of workers to get an opportunity to go to college, to get a degree or to go to a trade school and learn a skill and to go out and make their life better than their parents. Don and I say this all the time. Our, neither one of our parents would have ever dreamed of having what we have. And we don't have much of anything. But they would have been amazed at the villages or, or the things that we have or the cars that we drive or the technologies that we use. Her dad was, owned a little meat shop and barely scraped by and paid the bills. And my dad worked in a factory, was a welder. We got college educations, and she became a nurse. And I'm still trying to figure out why I'm doing this. No, I know why I'm doing it. He made me. America needs a revival. America needs, first of all, to realize we hold this thing as a trust. This thing that we have in our hands, this freedom, this amazing nation can be taken away from us just as quickly as planes flying into a building, as bombers coming over the ocean. It is that tenuous. It is that easily dissolved or evaporated. Wake up. Wake up and rise up and start to make the sacrifices necessary to keep what we have. And I was putting my thoughts together for this. I, I was thinking about the play Camelot. And I thought, if you took the word Camelot, the name Camelot, out of the song that ends the play, and put America there instead, it's pretty powerful. Camelot. Camelot. I know it gives a person pause, but in Camelot, those are the legal laws. Where once it never rained till after sundown, by 8 a.m. the morning fog had flown. Don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot, one for one brief shining moment that was known as Camelot. You know, the, the mist. The mythical story of Camelot, Camelot, we don't even really for sure, I mean, there's some conjecture about it, but we don't really know for sure where it is or if it absolutely existed. Now there are those who believe Arthur really did exist and that they think they know where Camelot was. But imagine that, that, that this place called Camelot, this amazing place, the, the, the myths of the round table and all of that, gone, gone. Not the only civilization, not the only nation, not the only story like that. The Bible is full of them, full of nations that rose and fall, fell, full of, of stories of, of the failure of nations because the people, the people just didn't get it. When Moses was up on the mountain getting the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, the people of Israel were down below burning up and melting gold jewelry to form a a calf, a golden idol, to go against the, the religion of the time, the faith of the time disobeying the leadership and 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 just going their own way in a kind of anarchy and bedlam. Kind of sounds too familiar. Kind of sounds like the nightly news. 
before we go through the pain of, of another wake-up call, another 9-11, another 2,000-plus moms and dads, young men and young women, people in the prime of their lives, even children dying, being incinerated in a moment for what? We need to wake up. We need to love America again. We need to correct what is wrong with America together and cherish what is right with America together. Despite all of the criticism and all of the negative news and all of the problems people point at and pick at, tell me of another nation on earth where you could live as well where you could live as free, where you would have the opportunity to march in the streets. America, America, let's hope that we never sing together for once there was a spot for one brief shining moment that was known as America. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Remind us, as we remember those who died on 9-11, just how fragile life is, how fragile democracy can be, how fragile the nations of this earth continue to be. Teach us to value what you have given us. Teach us to cherish it. Teach us to see it as a gift from you. Let all of us be willing to sacrifice. Let all of us be willing to live in such a way that we honor the gift and we protect the gift and we pass the gift along to those that we love. For all that you have done, Father, for all the history and the wonder of this land, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you. In the name of Christ, amen. The presence of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, there God is. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.
Thank you. John, good song.
Thank you. 